it's your girl Jackie oh welcome back to today's fix it Friday video so a lot of you guys wanted me to touch on a topic of foundation flashback camera flashback how to take a picture without the makeup looking 10 15 shades lighter than the rest of your complexion unfortunately the camera flashback is just one of those problems that I feel like every woman suffers from no matter from super light to super dark it's something that we can all be a victim of i actually wanted to talk about this and give some tips in a little bit of a different way than you might expect so a lot of people actually i would say most makeup artists and just makeup experts usually attribute spf in makeup for being the main factor for flashback in pictures whenever you take a photo and you get that white cast a lot of people have been saying for years that it is spf i know i'm treading into unmarked territory however out of all of the years i've been told this and out of all of the training and just out of all of the times i've heard this i've yet to really find and i i could be wrong this is just my theory but I've yet to really find any solid evidence that directly, and I mean directly, points to SPF being the direct factor of camera flashback. And I say that because we all have foundations that don't have SPF in them, but we still get flashback. So, I mean, is it the talk? Is it the silica in the makeup? Like, no one really knows. And I've spent tons of time on the internet looking for articles and nothing really I, I don't know I don't know like maybe you guys can fill me in and give me some advice on that nothing really ever scientifically backs up or supports that claim and I feel like it's definitely a debatable claim just based on what I was saying earlier there's so many foundations out there that still get flashback even when they do not contain SPF or at least they don't claim to contain SPF and my opinion based on my experience what do I think causes flashback I actually think one of the biggest things that causes flashbacks are a few things. One, I've never gotten camera flashback from a foundation that actually matched me correctly. So think about it, you guys. If a foundation is lighter than your skin tone, it's probably going to look like a white cast. And one thing that I want to stress on so much, and I know people are probably, this is probably going to be like a sketchy topic, but... A lot of people are constantly asking me, Jackie, why don't you include your foundation shades whenever you talk about it? I don't mind answering the question about foundations and sharing my foundation shades, but the reason why I stopped altogether is because, or, or I just stopped including them by default. If you guys ask, I don't mind answering every once in a while. I noticed that I would get this comment like daily from people. It always goes something like this, Jackie, we are the same foundation shade and I went out and bought XYZ in your shade and I took a picture and it doesn't look good. It's too ashy. What am I doing wrong? And so I'm like, to me, the logic behind that is, well, okay, if it looks good on me in a picture, but it doesn't look good on you in a picture, then girl, that's not your shade. But I guess a lot of people, because you see me on camera and maybe you think, we may look the same, but you guys have to remember that I have tons of light on me. Even right now, like I look lighter than I actually am. Yeah, see, like I've got concealer here that kind of balances out the golden in my chest. So there's a lot of different, your camera resolution, your, I'm sorry, your computer resolution is also going to affect how I look. So I really, 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 and I wholeheartedly think that if your foundation shade matches you it's not supposed to reflect light it's supposed to look like your skin tone now that's just my theory that's just based on my own experience the second thing that i've noticed and this one is like hands down i even found a blog post that pretty much supports the exact same thing that i'm going to be talking about now okay, powders we're gonna we're also going to include powders in this conversation they are welcome come on powders come on have a seat right here okay so Powders, same thing. I noticed that whenever I do my makeup because my skin's so oily, I typically layer on quite a few power powders. I'll use like a translucent powder under the eye and then sometimes I'll use it like on the perimeter of my face area and then I'll also set it with a loose powder. Whenever I do my makeup, like if I take a picture of my makeup within the first 10-15 minutes, especially with my iPhone, direct camera flash is hands down you are going to have flashback. If you're going to snap a pic, boom, right there. And especially if you're like right in your face, there's no, 
it, it doesn't matter if your foundation is 100% SPF talk and silica free, it's going to reflect light. One thing that I have noticed though, in, and I could be wrong on this, I noticed two things that help to kind of balance that out. One, taking the picture in a well balanced, well lit area to where the direct flash is not the only source of light that's bouncing off of my face. So right now I've got two soft boxes in my video and then I have this ring light that's shining on me now. The, the soft boxes are considered what most people would call bounce lighting. So it's like, it's reflecting off of the, I don't wanna to get too technical or too confusing, but those lights are a little bit soft and more diffused versus a camera phone, especially the iPhone, that's just like super harsh and like it's also in your face. And what I was trying to say earlier is a couple ways that I help combat that is by having multiple different lighting sources around me so that it's not just relying on the flash alone that seems to like help kind of counteract that and then the second thing that i really noticed is it i only really get camera flashback like when i immediately like if i take a picture within the first 10 15 minutes of applying my foundation i almost kind of feel like after it's been applied and my natural oils have kicked in my body chemistry it's kind of like i guess mixed and mingled with my natural oils i feel like it just looks better in a picture an hour two hours after I've done my makeup. That's just my personal observation. Like I said, it could be wrong. I could be tripping, but I've actually done that before. Like sometimes I almost feel like, especially if I do my makeup at night and there's a, I'm in a low lighting setting, it just looks way better if I wait a couple hours or if I wait in, and I, if I wait to go into like a bedroom or an event where it's well lit and pictures just come out so much better. So a lot of people ask me, what are some flashback free foundations? I don't really necessarily think that it's the foundation. I just think it's the flash. I think it just depends on the source of lighting that you're using. And I mean, I have tons of foundations I was ready to name off. Becca, I have the Ever Matte Shine Proof Makeup Forever HD. This is going to be some good advice for my brides out there that are looking for a flashback free foundation, which you're probably not really gonna have to worry about anyway, because if you have a professional photographer there, they're not going to be using a direct flash type of situation or setting. The foundation from Black Up, I mean, these are all amongst some of my favorites. L'Oreal True Match, Face Atelier, none of these foundations, none of these foundations give me flashback at all. Same thing goes for the powders I use. I use one from Black Up, Sasha is a staple powder, L'Oreal True Match. I mean, these all of these products just work because not only are they properly shade matched, but also because I guess I'm taking a picture in a more well-lit setting and I try to not only rely on direct flash. When it comes to powders, I definitely feel like some powders are just not flash friendly. I don't know if you guys remember the whole Makeup Forever HD scandal that was going on when the HD powders first came out. Now, obviously that's the exception to the norm. I have no clue how that powder is formulated. I have no clue. Even the people like even the people from Makeup Forever released statements saying it's not the powder. So, I mean, who really knows? Who really knows what ingredient is causing that? But I would just I just truly think that SPF in general, like every single foundation that contains SPF, I, I really don't think that it's going to be the automatic cause of camera flashback because like I said, I use foundations that have SPF in them. Max Studio Fix Fluid is like a one of the most well-known, most commonly known ones that has SPF 15. Same thing. I don't think that SPF itself is a direct cause of flashback. I really just think it's just the source of lighting, the shade that you use, the powder, if you're wearing a powder, it's definitely make sure that it's properly shade matched. And you guys, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't want to tell you guys or share you guys my, I'm, I get it. I get why people ask the shade. I ask people their foundation shades all the time too, but it's supposed to be used as a reference and not, that's what she uses. That's what I'm supposed to, no, 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 no. If, if I use NW40 or if I use MAC NW45, you should use it as a reference. And if not, like if you go to your local makeup counter and you don't feel confident that they can find your proper shade, because I know that happens for a lot of people. I've been there, it's not cute. I can actually show you the proper way to get your actual foundation shade. And I will link that video down below in the description box. And if you cannot find your shade in that particular shade range, you need to go find a different foundation to use because that is not the line that's gonna cater to your skin tone. 
Very simple. And I know a lot of people who live in different countries. You can't take makeup back. Trust me, I know the struggle. I do. But it's just we have to really learn how to know our undertones, learn how to find our own foundation shades so that we can stop buying the wrong foundation because I'm telling you, it sounds silly and it sounds extreme, but it happens so much and people would get really mad at me like, you said this was a good product and it wasn't. And I would be like, oh my God, oh my God. So yeah, I, I stopped by default. And like if people ask, I still tell it, but I stopped by default just putting my foundation shades in there and I don't know. I mean, people may not agree with it. I'm. It's that's probably not gonna happen forever. But it's just that I I put so much time and energy in showing you guys how to properly find products that will work for you, so that you don't have to rely on people at these counters that don't know anything about dark skin. So that's just where I'm at. That's all the tips that I have for today's Fix It Friday. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you have any other questions or anything that may back up the whole SPF claim, I would love to see them in the comments down below and read up on it because I'm here to give you guys education and tips and I'm constantly learning new things. If you had asked me four years ago about the SPF thing, I totally would have told you that. I'm sure there's videos of me floating around saying that SPF causes flash, but the longer I've been doing makeup and the more that I've been been and seen and experienced otherwise, I'm just like, is it really SPF? I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you guys think and I will see you at tomorrow's video. Mwah. Bye.